Mugduk Castle lies at the heart of Mugduk Country Park and has a rich and colourful history. Situated on a rocky outcrop and originally surrounded on three sides by Mugduk Loch, the castle was the administrative centre for the lands of Mugduk and was one of the strongholds of the powerful Clan Graham. No one is sure how old the castle actually is, but it was first mentioned in a vellum document relating to land ownership and dated the 24th of August 1372 and signed at Mugduk. Born in 1612, the most famous Graham associated with Mugduk was James Graham, who inherited the earldom in 1626. He was the first signatory of the Scottish Covenant in 1638, but although he opposed the introduction of Anglicanism in Scotland, believed in the divine rights of the kings and therefore supported the royalist cause during the English Civil War. He was created Lieutenant General in Scotland in 1644 by King Charles I and was given the title Marquis of Montrose on the same year. He won many victories against the King's adversaries, including the Battle of Inverlochy in 1645, but was defeated at the Battle of Philip Hall the following year and spent the next three years in exile. King Charles I was executed in 1649 and the rule of Cromwell's Commonwealth began. Montrose returned to Scotland in 1650 and raised an army with the intention of restoring the monarchy. He made his last stand at the Battle of Carbisdale in 1650 but was defeated and captured. Montrose was taken to Edinburgh where he stood trial for treason and was found guilty. He was hung, drawn and quartered in the Market Cross on the 21st of May, 1650. The castle has changed over the centuries from its original form of four towers connected by a high curtain wall and a great hall in the courtyard. It was attacked twice during the reign of King Charles I. The first occasion was in 1641 under the instructions of Parliament when the great Marcus himself was a political prisoner in Edinburgh Castle. The second attack occurred in 1644, when a small force led by Buchanan inflicted serious damage. So severe was this damage that part of the castle and one of the towers were no longer habitable. Around 1655, some of the rubble from the partially demolished tower was utilised to build a small, two-storey house with crow-stepped gables. If you look to the right of the tower, you'll see a chimney and part of the rooftops of this old house. For some years it was home to the second Marquis of Montrose, but was thought to be a poor dwelling place for a Marquis. By 1835, Archibald MacLelland, Glasgow magistrate and collector of fine art, leased the old house, living there until his death in 1854. John Guthrie Smith, local historian and antiquarian, leased Mugduk Castle from the Duke of Montrose in 1874. He had the old house of Mugduk demolished in 1875 and replaced it with a grand mansion built in the Scottish baronial style. Laterally, the house was owned by Sir Hugh Fraser and being found to be full of dry rot was abandoned and later demolished. The old castle and its surrounding ruins lay abandoned until it became part of Mugduk Country Park in the 1980s. Of the four original towers of the castle, the best preserved is the South West Tower. It has been restored to reflect how it may have looked during the early to mid 17th century, the time of James Graham, the Great Marquis. The day-to-day -day running of Mugduk estate was left to Montrose's factor. Mugduk's economy was based on farming and tenants paid their dues annually. The barrel vaulted first floor chamber may have been used for this reason. In order to keep the peace and to deter any theft, weaponry was often left on display and likely close to the factor's hand. As you start to climb the narrow spiral staircase, 
it takes you past the blocked doorway that originally would have led out to the battlements above the portcullis. As you continue to climb, you come to the second floor landing and a wonderful sight through the door. The second floor chamber is smaller and more private. The importance of the room is shown by the large fireplace and it may have been used to entertain. And what better way to entertain than with a great feast? Feasting in the 17th century was a grand affair and being invited to the Marquis's table would have been a great honour. Delicacies such as swan and venison, lamprey pie and roast lamb were commonplace with the nobility of that time period. Climbing to the third floor, the large chamber known as the Graham Room displays the great and noble history of James Graham, the great Marquis, and the clan itself. Here in the Graham Room, anyone with the family name Graham can pause for a while and research their ancestry. The Clan Graham Society of North America has played an important part in supporting the castle's restoration over many, many years. The commanding views from the top of the 70 foot high tower are impressive. Standing on the ancient battlements, you really get a feel for why the castle was constructed here all those centuries ago with views over the outer courtyard showing the domestic range, the old laundry and stables. Mugduck Loch and the Campsy Fells made up of ancient lava flows some 350 million years old. The gently rolling Kilpatrick Hills and the city of Glasgow nestling in the Clyde Basin Standing on those battlements will make you want to pause for quite some time. With so much history, as well as over 270 hectares of woodland, farmland, moorland and loch, Mugduk Country Park makes a great day out for the whole family.